Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to our first training webinar of the Project Icarus. Uh, so we have taken a few um, a few moments just to let everyone uh, join in. And today's uh, webinar is about Europe and macro-regional policies and strategies for sustainable mobility and sustainable and, and multimodal transport. So um, for those uh, who don't know me, I'm Eleonora Tu, and I'm the coordinator of the Icarus project. And today joining me, uh, I have uh, Pierpaolo Pintucci from uh, Venice International University. We are very happy to have you here, and uh, I would like to give you a very wor warm welcome, both from me and from uh, Venice International University, and also on behalf of the Institute for Transport and Logistics, uh, which is the institute I work for. Uh, so this is the first series of um, the first of a series of webinars uh, that we will hold uh, thanks to the Italy Croatia program, which has funded also the Icarus project. Um, so Icarus project is uh, has just uh, started last year, and is a project that fights against the uh, problems that are generated by the use of private cars. We are trying to introduce some innovative solutions based on uh, technologies that try to adapt smart mobility into a digital world. Uh, many of our participants today are part of the project, so we are very happy to give uh, them some additional information on uh, planning, mobility, and mobility as a service, as well as intermodal solutions. So this, uh, this is also the aim of these webinars, to help uh, public authorities and uh, organizations to understand uh, better all these issues and to get some insights from experts such as uh, Pierpaolo. Um, as part of the Icarus project, we also would like to activate behavioral change in mobility, again, using the mobility as a service concept. Uh, we have a number of channels through which we regularly communicate, so you can reach us through our website um, or you can also connect with our social networks. You can just uh, type in the different uh, uh, search bars, uh, Icarus, uh, Italy, Croatia, and they should pop up. All right, so uh, before we dive into today's webinar, uh, I would like to just do some housekeeping first. So this webinar is being recorded and uh, you will receive the webinar, the, the slides of these webinars. You can also download them um, in this particular um, uh, window. Actually, I think you should be able to see it on, uh, um, on, the, on the small window of uh, GoToWebinar. Um, you will be muted throughout the webinar and you can ask questions using, uh, uh, using the chat box uh, that you also see in your window. Um, the webinar will last for about an hour and I will collect all the different questions that are uh, coming from, from the audience uh, and then I will forward them to uh, Pier Paolo so that he, he can give us uh, his insights and we, we can discuss them a little bit. So Pierpaolo will speak for about 40, 45 minutes, and, uh, and after that, we'll take a Q&A. And um, I think that's all from my side. And uh, with that being said, without further ado, I leave you the floor, uh, Pierpaolo. Thank you very much, Eleonora. I am starting, first of all, before starting with the webinar, let me briefly thank the Icarus Project Consortium and particularly the lead partner um, Institute for Transport and Logistics and uh, Venice International University for this coordination, this excellent coordination and uh, for the specific project activity. And above all, for the opportunity to recap analyze and discuss with all of you in this session an important and really huge topic as uh, our topic European and member state policies and strategies for sustainable mobility. I would like just to make a short summary because the aim of this webinar is the tentative to track uh, a sort of review of European strategies uh, uh, related to sustainable mobility 
and multimodal transport policies, but not just about this. And uh, uh, okay, now I can share the presentation with all of you. Okay, perfect. And uh, for this reason, the, the, the overview uh, will concern of uh, the following three main sections. The first one is a short reassessment of European policies, specifically in the last 20 years. But as just discussed, uh, uh, at the same time, without uh, overlooking some interesting policies, backdated uh, some of significant policies appearing during the 90s and at the very beginning of the of the new century. Then uh, we will go through the macro-regional strategies and implementation policies focused particular on EUSAIR Adriatic Union Euro region. Naturally, because of we are in the content of uh, uh, Italia Croatia European project, and this is the framework uh, that could be more interesting for all of you. And then we will discuss the spillover effects of European policies in some member states. And uh, naturally, uh, the member states are Italy and Croatia. And um, finally, we try to highlight some selecting key topics and keywords emerging uh, has leading concept from mobility and transport policies, and uh, especially in the last years. And then I will try to summarize some insights related uh, to the next AU funding programs. Uh, this is a specific part, and uh, as Eleonora suggested to me, because uh, she has some feedback from you. You are particularly interested to the next European funding program, so I will try to give you some insights uh, concerning the new uh, European co territorial cooperation, the Interreg framework, and then I will try also to go through the new horizon uh, Europe, uh, the framework research pro program of the European Commission. So uh, before starting, just a, a short methodological note. The PowerPoint that we will see together is a, a presentation. It's probably oversized. Uh, it's got more than 100 slides and it's really packed of information for 40 minutes talk presentation but in my mind and according with ITL and BIU it's conceived as a sort of use, uh, useful booklet um, or be better as an handbook uh, with references, uh, sources, related links uh, um, available to all of you and uh, if someone uh, would be interested to go in depth of the policies or uh, to the, legisl the legislation text or to the macro regional and national strategy uh, with this presentation easily we'll be able to do this at the same time for this reason for this approach uh, during the uh, the webinar i will rapidly show or skip some slides in order to not overrun the time schedule. But please feel free to stop me if you have any questions or uh, if you need to send a question to, uh, to ITL in, in order that at the end we can discuss together any doubts, questions, specification and so on. Um, I will try with to start with this overview, uh, first of all, um, if we should try to identify 
a series of milestones in the time frame that falls within the end of the 80s and the beginning of the new century in order to track a sort of chronological a sort of chronological bridge a chronological development of the transport policies towards the new paradigm of sustainable mobility probably the first official document uh, mentioned in the majority of the literature concerning the argument uh, as a sort of landmark a, a sort of turning point to take into consideration is uh, the the one commonly known as the Brutland report probably all of you just know this fundamental document and uh, this report is beyond the horizon of uh, European Union because was um, was drafted by the World Commission on Environment and Development, appointed by the United Nations Secretariat, uh, in order to address some urgent global challenges at environmental level, and in order to uh, define a sort of environmental strategy and action for achieving uh, a sustainable development. Uh, going through rapidly to this document because I've got some slides for the reason that I, I explained to you before. I would like to take your attention on some sentences particularly. In this report we can find the transportation policies and practices start to be considered as a relevant issues a sort of uh, a fundamental plaque within uh, the environmental challenges and new sustainable development policies. This is not a report concerning transport, it's a, a, a global report concerning a sort of uh, uh, shift that the world, the United Nations ask concerning environmental policies. So, uh, if you go in depth, uh, uh, we could find uh, one, like one of the, of the main challenges, a sort of request of reorientation of transport policies as a main task within uh, this process. And uh, the, the United Nations asked for a change and uh, transport policies for the first time uh, uh, occupy a sort of uh, important task. Um, and uh, in, this, in, this report, in this report, uh, it's really important the, the um, one specific fact that the environmental risk inherent in greater production and in uh, increased demand of transport, energy, and infrastructure must, must be countered, and environmental consideration must be fully and effectively integrated into this and other policy areas. Okay. It's, it's really important to quote this and uh, at the same time it's important to quote uh, in 1990 the European Council Dublin Declaration uh, in which uh, um, the, the line uh, on, of the Brutland Report um, it's totally um, take into consideration also in this declaration. Then I rapidly uh, quoted other four important uh, documents and uh, with different relevance. The first one in 1992 is the Commission's first white paper uh, on the 
future development of the common transport policies is the first one uh, for the Commission and then we'll follow the European Commission white paper on European transport policy for 2010 the first target horizon target uh, in order to decide concerning the environmental shift also in uh, transportation policies then in 2003 we've got uh, a European Parliament resolution on the on the same Commission white paper that enhances the the rule of the of the recommendation of the white paper and um, it's uh, finally I think that it's uh, really important to uh, quote uh, also. Uh, the other European Commission uh, document of the February 2004 concerning uh, uh, a thematic strategy on urban environment. Uh, this is important for me because uh, um, it will open a sort of spotlight also on the uh, urban dimension and it's uh, really important to take into consideration. Um, just some guideline concept emerging from this list of documents that I explained. Uh, the first white paper of 1992 is uh, opening up uh, to uh, a sort of uh, transportation uh, uh, policies related to um, the new uh, mm, uh, how can I say, the top priority of the European Union in 1992 was uh, the cohesion and to open up the internal market. But at the same time, uh, because in, 1990, in 1985 the European Court of Justice declared that the inland transport uh, Passenger, transport passengers and should be open to all the community firms and so the internal market uh, to create a real internal market of European Union was the top priority but at the same time uh, this document tried to switch uh, to a more comprehensive uh, uh, paradigm and to include in this also the environmental objectives. Uh, please, in this document, try to remember for the next section that the year 1992 and the sub-eating of, uh, of the white paper, uh, because uh, the section uh, talk for the first time of, uh, of the sustainable mobility. Then, uh, for the first time, as you can see, in these, as you can see in this graph and uh, in this elaboration of data, uh, the Commission was really influenced concerning the um, different model split uh, at that time in Europe because the private cards are so wide and uh, all the other transport modes are so uh, low uh, in terms of uh, use and also uh, in terms of infra infrastructure at disposal of the of the people so uh, for the first time we've got this this framework this integrated framework uh, related to environment safety in transport and at the same time remain the task to development and integration of uh, community transport uh, systems then um, just one um, i would like just one underline uh, uh, a paper, an important paper in 2000, the European Transport Policy and Sustainable Mobility by Ackerman, Bannister and other important uh, authors that uh, 
uh, underlined that the transport in Europe is unsustainable and it's 2000 and the uh, European Union uh, needs to lead in promoting uh, sustainable transport policies. So uh, probably the 2001 was the real turning point in European transport policies because uh, it was like a route tracked by the European Commission with a proposal to the Gothenburg uh, European Council uh, in which uh, take into consideration the transport congestion as a real ch challenge and they need to shift uh, to uh, multimodal transport and for the first time they setting long-term objectives and targets and as example really important the couple transport grows significantly from growth of gdp because it's impossible and unsustainable the transport grow uh, totally uh, related to the growth of gdp then the shift in transport use from road to rail water and public passenger uh, this is really important because it's a sort to became aware that the importance of multimodal transport and then the differences the imbalances between rural and urban area and in 2001 for the first time they take measures at european level and uh, you can find the, the series of measures and the series of deadlines set it out and appearing for the first time guidelines concepts really important and you can show in this uh, slide something like revitalizing the railways turning intermodality into reality uh, developing high quality urban transport uh, it's the first time that all of this concept could be uh, merged in a in a single document and uh, clearly at the back uh, of this document was the analysis on the passenger transport modes and on the goods transport modes where the the private car uh, and the road transport was so high and so unsustainable now i i need to skip the um, some slide because uh, uh, here you can find the, the 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 white paper of 2001 the priority setting and so on and you you can on your own you can find all the elements in order to go in deep of this document what is the important that is in uh, 2003 in uh, the european parliament in Strasbourg, uh, making additional remarks emerging from the European Parliament resolution and the concept of sustainability was consolidated and uh, must be the basis, uh, they said, and it's really important. Then, uh, sorry, I've got, okay. Um, going on in 2004, we've got the a thematic strategy for the first time concerning the urban environment. And in this document, appear for the first time uh, a reference to uh, uh, to the need to implement sustainable urban transport plan. It's uh, it's really important to um, remark this, uh, and so also at urban level uh, the the European policies start to uh, build up uh, a sort of framework with some priority themes uh, related to sustainable urban transport sustainable urban design and management so um, Another another important uh, topic that I would like to underline is uh, 
the introduction of the element of the social equity in urban mobility. It's really important because uh, they start to discuss concerning the importance of uh, the possibility to access to the different uh, transport modes for all. And I think that it's one of uh, the first uh, remarks on this important topic. Then we have just arrived to the period that we decided to um, track um, concerning the most important step taken by the European Commission, European Parliament, and so on. And probably, I think that the majority of you uh, will know this uh, uh, really famous document, I think, especially for transport experts, uh, transport planner, and so on. Uh, because um, will be widely spread uh, around European Union and single member states. Uh, starting from 2005, we will um, start with a, a renewed agenda, with a, a new methodology, a review, a midterm review of each of the white paper, and in order to assess the real results of these policies. And in 2007, the Green Papers towards a new culture for urban mobility is the second important document that is totally focused on the urban environment. And there is a sort of shift that we will see in the section when we will talk about uh, keywords and key topics. Uh, we start to see a difference between the word transport and the word mobility, uh, also at semantic level. Then, uh, 2011, I think that the most famous white paper in uh, European Union, the Roadmap to a Single European Transport Area, and uh, the strategy and the vision of this uh, white paper is uh, influencing all the other um, legislative documents, uh, policy documents of European Union and also of the uh, single member states. It's really important that in 2013 uh, it was drafted the Urban Mobility Package. Uh, the urban mobility package for me it's really important because um, launch a new concept and it was the concept of sustainable urban mobility plans and uh, increasing the commitment of the single european cities in order to implement uh, this kind of new urban mobility plan and so the, the Commission was really engaged in 2014, uh, implementing a European transport, a European platform on sustainable urban mobility plans. All of you probably knows the European uh, Observatory, uh, the ELTIS, that it's really important to connect cities around Europe in this kind of topics. And uh, as in the past, the European Parliament resolution um, fixed the concept, the fixed the concept of uh, sustainable urban mobility, and uh, it's uh, really important because it's more binding than before the 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 urgency to going through this new strategy. Uh, then you will find other important documents, but the, the, the time will run. And so uh, I will just quote in 2017, the Europe on the Move, an agenda for a socially fair transition. 
please remember also this uh, is the first time that sustainable mobility was uh, declined for all it's uh, the european union ask sustainable mobility for all it's a, a sort of uh, important shift to a new paradigm planning for people and not for traffic as uh, stated in SUMP concept. Then uh, you can find here all the key trends and the challenges to go in depth uh, also concerning this agenda. And now we, I, I would like to arrive to, to these days and uh, I would like to suggest to all of you to read and you can find in the references also the link an important uh, uh, working paper drafted for the European Commission at the beginning of 2020 titled how many people can you reach by public transport bicycle or on foot in European cities and it's the first time that we are take accessibility and uh, put it at the top of the agenda. Another important concept in order a sort of uh, um, a new vision uh, of the European Union that take into consideration the possibility, the opportunity, <coughs> sorry, for all the people to have access to the different transport modes. Okay, now uh, I will go through the second uh, section that is related to our framework, if we, if we could say so. The macro-regional and cross-border strategies related to uh, Adriatic and Union region. As you know, um, Probably you well know that, uh, for example, the Italy Croatia indirect pro uh, program is uh, included in this strategy for the Adriati Adriatic and Ionian region. Is uh, the macro regional areas is a, a new uh, framework built up by the Commission in order to improve the cohesion. Uh, concerning all the most important topics and uh, concerning uh, transport because you, you, you can find in these strategies uh, several pillars and the, the, our pillar is connecting the region connecting the region it's uh, divided into three topics but the most important for us are the first one and the second one the first one is related to the maritime transport and uh, for a macro regional uh, area like uh, our it's really important because the adriatic the, the mediterranean section of the adriatic it's fundamental for transport uh, in this area and then the intermodal connections between uh, uh, peripheral area or coastal area and main touristic cities as an example and i think that it's really important also in the framework of european funding uh, uh, program um, in this uh, macro regional strategy are fixed some action uh, in order to improve maritime transport and probably here you are really engaged also with the uh, Icarus project and uh, also concerning intermodal connection to the interland I think that are your topics uh, in the project and here you can find all but I, I would like to underline an important uh, document a report by the OECD mm concerning this macro regional uh, area and i suggest to all of you to mm, to go through this document because uh, uh, they analyze uh, some specific part of the results 
of the strategy is a sort of uh, uh, assessment and then an outlook of future transnational cooperation in the region and it's uh, really important uh, uh, concerning the new challenges related to transport and, uh, and it's a document of 2019 and so it's a really uh, recent and uh, you will find a, a lot of very uh, trendy trending topics in this document and I, I think could be really useful for uh, for all of you and uh, you can find also case studies related to cross-border uh, activities at a wide European uh, um, level not just uh, uh, to the Adriatic and Union area in order to take suggestion to share and improve uh, experiences <coughs> Sorry. And uh, also, the, the European Commission, the DG region in 2016, make a summary report on concerning an online public consultation on uh, cross border strategy. And uh, I underlined the difficult of physical access to, especially uh, from the peripheral area. Uh, to the uh, coastal area and it's uh, really important to take into consideration this this topic and the lack of transportation connections I think that you are working on this uh, important task also with your projects then the spillover effects of European policies in member states um, I, I choose I, uh, two important uh, uh, documents related one to uh, republic of croatia um, from the ministry of the sea transport and infrastructure and is uh, the transport development strategy of the republic of croatia in the horizon 2017-2030 and there is a really interesting analysis of and figures of the situation in Croatia concerning transport, concerning uh, number of passengers uh, in different period uh, um, registered for public transport, and then uh, also modal shift and so on. It's it's really useful analysis, I think, in order to plan uh, a development strategy, and then fix uh, some general objectives. Um, for example, just to go in very, very, very fast, uh, developing the passenger model split, the freight model split, and uh, reducing the climate change uh, that came from pollution and GHG emissions. And um, I think that is a really well done transport plan. Uh, transport strategy, sorry, national transport strategy for Croatia. Then uh, for Italy, I take into consideration two different do uh, two different documents because uh, in the in the Croatian one, uh, you have got integrated all the information on sustainable development and uh, on the new mobility topics. In Italy, you have to take into consideration the, the document um, concerning the Wood Sustainable Development Strategy uh, by the Italian Ministry of uh, um, Environment, uh, in which uh, the transport issue is uh, um, quoted in the different uh sustainable development priorities so they uh, underline sustainable urban accessibility and mobility and increases sustainability sustainable mobility for people and goods and uh, it's it's really important because it's a, a really uh, huge uh, national strategy but transport as a, a relevant a real relevant uh, 
um, rule uh, within this. Then uh, the the most important, the, the second one, uh, most important document is the um, annex to the economy and finance, finance document of the Italian government. And uh, it's uh, the strategy uh, for uh, new mobility in Italy. And also in this case, we find some pillars and some intervention guidelines. I don't know if uh, uh, probably this this typology of document of, uh, by the government could be over uh, and over. Uh, uh, I don't know. Um, could be always integrated with new challenges. It's not a, a really comprehensive like the Croatian one, but I think that it's a, a, a really uh, important reference document because came fr directly from the government and from the Ministry of Transport, and uh, and you can find here all the spillover effects of uh, European policy strategy. So this is a, uh, we've got a few minutes. Eleonora, please, if I go into, um, if uh, I can use some minutes more in order to talk about some selected K topics and uh, K trending topics uh, with a focus, a specific focus on concept and meanings in transport policy. The first one is a sustainable transport and sustainable mobility. As I say, uh, in uh, when we talk about uh, the 1992 first white paper of the European Commission, it's the first time that we can show in an official document uh, the two terms together, sustainable and mobility. And uh, we start with, uh, with some differences. Generally speaking, mobility is a broader concept um, than transport. And it's, uh, it's a, a really nice quotation by uh, Gadmundson in a paper of 2003. And he said that it refers not only to actual movement, but also to a potential to movement, to the special economic and social context context. Uh, it's really important to take into consideration this skip, this change of paradigm, uh, because sustainable mobility, I think that it's really important synthesis, this sustainable mobility is by analogy a more eco-passing term than sustainable transport, more comprehensive, take into consideration um, the people, the, the needs of people in transport. And here, in another paper of 2004 by Oyer, you can uh, make a sort of chronological reassessment of the concept, because uh, the concept of sustainable transport was launched in 1990 in the Rio conference. And then two years later, as I said before, in 1992, uh, European Union for the first time applied the concept sustainable mobility as an overriding term and uh, I don't know if could be clear for all of you but the skip it's not so the shift is not so uh, irrelevant uh, in my opinion it's really important the second keywords uh, I would like to suggest is intermodality and multimodality uh, also, in this case, we find an intermodality in the European document in 1997 uh, of European Union, the European Commission, and they start to talk of intermodality as a real important characteristic of transport system. And they start to understand that there is a lack uh, concerning infrastructure in order to um, in order to um, create and uh, uh, give the opportunity to all the people to use different transport modes 
uh, and it's uh, really important to reflect that for passenger transport we've got a lot of terms we can find mixed mode commuting multimodality but at the same time uh, it's uh, uh, all these different declination this different of the same concept uh, lead to a really important concept the system of passenger mobility that provides equal opportunity to all person trip uh, for affecting their door-to-door -door journey um, please take into consideration this paper of Giannopoulos, Sami and Itali in 2015 because they find they defining common goals for future intermodality and mobility published in transportation research i think it could be very useful for you and uh, clear in 2018 the european commission uh, declared the year of multimodality and the start to launch really specific policies then uh, um, the third keywords i think for me it's uh, mobility planning for people uh, that is included in the SUMP concept because it's uh, the shift as I said before was really a, a really change of uh, of the state of mind the traditional transport planner is focused on transport the sustainable urban mobility planner now should be focused on people and uh, I don't know, but I think that uh, it's really important to take into consideration that the shift is not so uh, small. Mm. Mm. And uh, here I suggest to all of you to go to the RAPREP consult guidelines for development and implementing sustainable urban mobility plans. You can find easily on the LTS portal. And, uh, and year after year, you can find the different the annual European conference on sustainable urban mobility plan, and uh, cons all the instruments are available for all. And I think uh, that it's a uh, well, really well implemented policy with uh, all the important tools that could be needed, not just by the expert, by the transport planners, but but also by by the people uh, and though and they, for the first time uh, they they take into consideration the the transport the urban transport planning as a with a multidisciplinary approach okay and the last one for me is alternative fuels and new technologies i think that is it was the another keywords that we uh, find everywhere for transport and mobility because uh, European policies uh, needs to find uh, um, also a technological shift to another uh, form of uh, fuel and the fuel consumption the traditional fuel consumption is really high and so uh, they they start to finance and to improve a comprehensive alternative fuel strategy here you can find also some graphs concerning the different technology readiness level of the different uh, um, form of uh, uh, fuels and i think that also this is a very huge challenge for the european union because now we are uh everybody talk about electrification of european union but uh, i think it's not just the only uh, potential strategy uh, and the other alternative fuel will will emerge as for example uh, the fuel cells uh, hydrogen and uh, i think that we will see a lot of uh, implementation of different alternative fuels uh, in this in these uh, keywords i think that the problem is the infrastructure because uh, i think that it's not a problem to product 
um, new elect, uh, new cards, but the problem is to give all uh, the European member states the infrastructure in order to recharge and uh, some standards in order to recharge the vehicles. And there are a, a lot of issues on the table of these important keywords. And here, because of uh, Eleonora said to me that it's really that could be really interesting for you. I have uh, had some uh, uh, important uh, references concerning uh, fuels and concerning not only policies but also uh, technical reports uh, in order to understand uh, the implication of new forms of. Uh, uh, fuel in, tra in road transport but not only because another issue will be uh, that the, the road transport is not the, the only uh, mode of transport to electrificate. Uh, we have got to take into consideration maritime transport, uh, short shipping and so on and we have to and the air transport, and so a lot of issues will be on the table for the next years. Okay, then I, I will try to uh, conclude this presentation. Looking forward to the next uh, European Territorial Cooperation Framework Program. And uh, what about this? We know some. Uh, some insights. We know that uh, probably the the interreg programs uh, will try to um, change and simplify the the wool uh, framework. But I, I I don't like to give uh, uh, just the rumors. I would like to find some uh, official documents before starting. Uh, to discuss about the new interreg program. Probably the cross-border uh, programs, uh, I don't know, but will be redact? Question mark. I don't know. But uh, all the documents that I, I, I saw uh, talking about uh, two different uh, big interreg uh, of the Mediterranean area, east and west. Uh, but I, I repeat, I, I don't want, I, I would like to give you some, uh, some inputs, but um, within the European Commission and the, <coughs> the managing authority starts with the official documents, I would like to wait before starting with uh, uh, hypothesis. Um, the, the really important uh, uh, documents are in May 2018. This is an official document. The Commission adopted a proposal for the next multi-annual financial framework for the period 2021-2027 and uh, I would like to suggest to you to take into consideration this for uh, the next uh, funding program. And then uh, also for probably, uh, you will know also this, in September 2018, the, the specific program of Interreg Italy-Croatia uh, make a, his own contribution on the debate of the next programming period. <laughs> but we don't know if all the proposal will be uh, taken into consideration at the same level. Then, um, what is really important also, and it's similar in the interreg program uh, programs, European Territorial Cooperation, and also in the uh, European Funding for Research and Innovation. Your eyes on Europe. Uh, what's new? Uh, first one is reduce administrative burden. I think that uh, well done if this will be uh, 
put uh, uh, in uh, uh, as a real pillar of the next one and also rationalize the funding landscape uh, support the real breakthrough innovation the simplification i think that would be a really important issues for all the new funding programs and uh, also the new approach to the partnership um, just one note uh, important note for the european territorial cooperation i would like probably a lot of you well know uh, that uh, ITL proposed uh, a position paper uh, concerning uh, the topic of uh, transport in interreg programs uh, because it seems that uh, uh, the Commission uh, will uh, not uh, take into consideration as a, a pillar of the next funding period. So I would like to give you uh to to collaborate uh, in the effort uh, led by ITL to uh make a sort of lobbying in order to understand that the pillar of mobility is really important in uh, territorial cooperation programs then for the next horizon europe that is uh, the young brother of uh, uh, horizon 2020 in June 2018, the most significant uh, change is that mobility was included, included in the cluster uh, five together with climate and energy. Uh, in the past, in the past Horizon 2020, uh, it's not integrated. And uh, above all, climate, energy and mobility uh, will find uh, in this new cluster common challenges uh, and i think that uh, will be important to reflect on this because new uh, synergy and uh, new collaboration uh, should be uh, improved okay i really uh, finished and you can find all the references at the end of my presentation. And you can find all the most important, in my opinion, all the most important papers that could be useful for you. And at the same time, when, when it's possible in the single slide, you can find also the link to the legislative docs in order you can download directly and then you can read you can collect you can use in order to write new proposal for the new funding period thank you thank you and i'm totally available for questions uh, and uh, by your side eleonora thank you thank you very much uh, pier paolo and uh, thank you also for uh, um, this really comprehensive presentation with a focus on uh, some of the questions and interests that we received from uh, from our partners. Uh, so we have received uh, a couple of questions. Um, okay. So we will uh, we will try to end uh, this presentation uh, in in about ten minutes. So okay. <laughs> uh, I will uh, very our our participants. So um, the first question we have received um, is uh, is about technology, and particularly um, you you talked a little bit about alternative fuels. Mm -hmm. And with regards to that, we often see, let's say, different speeds uh, at which uh, technology and uh, advancement is made. For example, in uh, alternative fuels and what uh, policies actually allow to do. So uh, sometimes it can happen that we have prototypes of uh, specific uh, technologies, uh, but this cannot be deployed on a larger scale because, uh, because maybe there is not a policy, not a regulation for that. Um, so uh, do you think uh, that um, in the future, this uh, this will change. So policies will be able to adapt faster or in another way to technology and vice versa. 
So um, how can policies adapt us to the different standards that are coming out for different technologies? I hope so, <laughs> but I, I I really don't know. I'm not a, a, a technologist uh, expert of these issues, but I really go through the policies and I think that uh, now the 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 field it's not is still not um, the leading field is not is still not uh, related to policy. I think that there are some uh, really uh, influencing lobbies, as for example, as for example, the automotive uh, uh, production and all the firms of the automotive, or uh, the provider of uh, energy, and. Um, when they will find a first, um, a first, uh, I don't know, a first um, draft, common draft of um, of how and which technology to scale up, I think that we we will do a really important step for step forward. And uh, at, uh, and I think that this is the main obstacle. And I think that the rule of the not only of the European Commission but the single member state to uh, try to influencing firms in order to find the standard solution, because this is the the first thing. Uh, I know that there are market rules, but uh, I think that the citizens uh, came first. And so it's really important that it's uh, in the next 10 years we will find some... Uh, I think that the electrification, as all, all the, the documents say, that probably will be the, the faster solution for as alternative fuels. But if we think that we have no plug-in, common plug-in to recharge our batteries, or, or we haven't still batteries um, uh, environmentally friendly, or uh, with a, a large uh, usability, I think uh, it's it's really difficult to to create some standard. Yeah. Um, so just uh, two other questions. Um, so, okay, this is uh, this is quite a large one, and, um, and so I hope that obviously <laughs> we don't have much time. Just your your opinion on this. So of course I think we uh, we all experience the effects of this public health situation. And uh, we can imagine that the effect of COVID will also reflect on uh, future policies. Uh, if you, in your opinion, of course, if you can just highlight what are going to be the main impacts uh, of um, of COVID and uh, um, yeah, this disease outbreak on policies. Yes, yes, sure. Uh, in this case, I think. But it's an impulsive uh, uh, answer. Uh, what uh, I read during the last months, and uh, I've got a lot of a little bit of fear of this, that uh, probably uh, the private cars will be a revenge on public transport, a revenge in these terms, because clearly. Um, the the situation uh, the health situation and the virus uh, could uh, uh, improve the use of not improve sorry uh, could uh, um, encourage perhaps. push on yes yeah. encourage people to use private cars in order to have uh, uh, social distancing and this is and I think that uh, I think that this is in my opinion this is the main topic uh, we should uh, uh, 
take into consideration because uh, we we have uh, make a lot of efforts during the last years in order to reduce private cars and uh, in my opinion we are still at the beginning and uh, if we uh, and if with this um, emergency health emergency uh, the 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 use of uh, private uh, cars private transports increase uh, I think that uh, all of our efforts could be really uh, difficult to going through, uh, um, I don't know, improvements. And uh, stop and go could be the, the, the worst situation in a policy so difficult like the uh, improving uh, multimodal transport modes uh, and uh, above all sustainable transport modes and so i hope that a lot of policy makers but also uh, from the scientific and technological side uh, will try to find a, a solution in order to guarantee to the people uh, the possibility and the opportunity to use uh, public transport modes also in the health emergency situation yeah i uh, i think we we certainly hope so as well uh, we have made a lot of efforts also um within the institute for transport and logistics and within our own region which is uh, emilia romagna and it would be really a shame a pity to um to see let's say uh, an evolution uh, yeah. reverse evolution yeah all right so i i think that unfortunately for us uh, time is up today uh i would like to once again thank you and all the colleagues from uh, both uh, icarus uh, who are following us uh, as well as uh, the colleagues uh, especially from uh, venice international university who has um has of course contributed to this webinar um, as I said previously, uh, you will find the recording of this webinar on our website and also on our YouTube channel. So uh, you can uh, you can look at what um, uh, Pierpaolo has shared today. And also uh, the hands out are available right now. So if you haven't done it yet, you can download it from here or I or you can also contact us uh, at um, uh, Icarus at uh, fondazioneitl.org and we will give you um, the hands out but all this information anyway will be available online so do um, follow us on social networks on our website and we will post some updates also for the next webinars again thank you so much for taking part and we hope to see you soon bye bye thank you bye bye